Hello and welcome. In this tutorial, we are going to show you how to import data into the Altair Rapid Miner Studios data repository. But first, let's take a brief look at the actual data itself. Note the link to the data file, so feel free to download and follow along. In our spreadsheet, we have five columns. We have gender, age, the payment method, whether or not our customers have churned, have left us, or are loyal, and how many days ago they last interacted with us. From the data we just presented, you can see that the overarching topic which you're looking at is customer loyalty. For a set of current customers, we want to predict who's going to leave, who's churning, and who's going to be loyal based on our past customer's behavior. If we can predict that, we can take proactive steps to encourage those customers to stay. And because the cost of making someone stay is usually much lower than finding new customers, this will have a positive impact on our business. Before we pull in that data from that spreadsheet, let's briefly review Rapid Miner Studio's graphical user interface. For more information, please refer to the introduction to the Rapid Miner's GUI video. Up here, we have access to the different views. There are the design and the results view, or if you want to use a more guided approach, you can use Turbo Prep Auto Model and Interactive Analysis. In the upper left, we see the toolbar with pull down menus and important buttons like Open New Process, Save Process, and also run the process and stop process buttons. Just below to the left is a repository panel. This is where you store and access data, processes, models, and other files you have in a local repository or if you have access to Rapid Miner AI Hub project. In the lower left, we have our operators panel from which you can drag and drop all the building blocks to create a process. If you have any extensions installed from our marketplace, they will show up here as well. Down here in the middle is a recommended operator section, which is run through the wisdom of the crowds. It is suggesting that many people begin their process with the retrieve operator. Over here is the help panel. Once you selected an operator anywhere in the Rapid Miner Studio, you can do a quick scan and read about what it does. Finally, up here is a parameter panel. This is where you set up the operators the way you want them to execute. Just a note here, as you see, it shows advanced parameters. If you're missing any specific parameters or want to apply some export settings, this is where you would need to look. If you don't want to adjust them or if you're unsure, don't worry. We will have them filled in with some reasonable default values for you. Okay, we have done our review. Now let's get started with our data input by setting up a repository with two folders. We recommend this as a best practice as it has proven to be a useful structure. We can create a new local repository by making a selection in the drop-down menu. I will call mine my first prediction and now I will create the two folders, one called data and one called processes. Make sure to highlight your new repository first so the folders end up in the right place. You can confirm with enter. You can also create folders directly in your repository by using the right mouse button. Now to load our data, we can simply select the button import data. It is located at my computer now we have to locate our file and click Next. Step two, loads in the data and displays it much like in a spreadsheet. Just to highlight over here is Sheet. If you have multiple ones in a spreadsheet, you can select the relevant one here. You can see that all the data is selected. If you would only want column B and C, you can type B colon C in the cell range field. Alternatively, you can also select a certain area by drawing a rectangle or using the mouse together with the shift key. Keep in mind that the cells you want to select always have to be located next to each other. If you want all, just click any cell and do Ctrl A or Command A if you're using a Mac to select them all. Finally, make sure to define your header row here. Here you can only select one row. So it's row number one or row number two or any other, but not both or multiple. Let's go to the next step. In this window, you can now decide if you want to exclude a certain column after all by selecting the exclude column entry. Further, you can change the name, the role, or the type of an attribute. Don't get confused by the word attribute. Now, in our terminology, we simply refer to columns or features as attributes. Rapid Miner Studio does a pretty good job at guessing what your data type is. For example, age is typically an integer, but it could also be a real number if it is something other than a person's age. In our case, the attribute churn has the value loyal or churn, and it's a polynomial. 
The option change role is to define what role the attribute will have later on during the modeling. Since our churn attribute contains the label information we want our model to learn from, we need to change its role. We will select the dropdown to assign at the role label. You can see this attribute is now highlighted in green, emphasizing its special role. Now, for the final step of this import, here we define where we want to store the data, which we are about to import to a local repository. We select a freshly created repository and select our data folder. Finally, we just give our dataset a name. For example, customer data and click finish. RapidMiner now displays the data, which we just loaded in the results view. If you now want to retrieve the data from a local data storage, we can just select it and pull it into the process panel. As you can see, RapidMiner automatically uses the retrieve operator and also sets the right parameters. It is now pretty obvious why retrieve was the first suggestion in the recommended operators. If you check now, you can see that it has been updated and would recommend as next step to use the select attributes operator. Now, what if your original input file, the spreadsheet, was changed? In our setup, the data in the repository will not be updated as it is a copy, which may be a good or a bad thing, depending on your requirements. So, if you do want to update your RapidMiner example set, then you can do that by overriding it. Let's do that briefly now, but this time we will use Turbo Prep to show you how it works there. Through the magic of some video editing, we can see this happening very quickly as the dialog is essentially the same. Select the location and the file. Change the role of the churn attribute and select the customer data so it gets overwritten. Confirm and done. As you see, the data display is slightly different, but the data display is the same as we have just replaced it with itself. This concludes our tutorial on importing data into Altair Rapid Miner Studio. Now, if you want to know how to automatically load the data, then check out our other video module where we show how to create a loading process. Thank you very much for watching.